Yeah, I look like I'm frozen. No, are you frozen? I'm frozen on my side. He's frozen. Wow. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. Okay, there we go. Okay, hey, everybody. Jefferson Graham here with Frederick Van Johnson. This week in photo, he's the guy. We're trying a little something different here. First live stream on YouTube. We've got some folks out there who are already there watching, so thank you, everybody. Uh, Frederick and I are going to talk iPhone photography and all sorts of other fun stuff, whatever's on your mind. We are open for your questions. Uh, we've got Greg and Jeff and Roy and... Um, somebody named Jay. And uh, hopefully more people will be coming in. Thank you, Frederick, for being the inaugural first guest. Thanks for having me. This is fun. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait, wait to see the to hear and respond to the questions. You are, of course, my inspiration, as well as my friend Mark Thompson, uh, who's hosted a Bay Area talk show for the last four years and is now doing it on YouTube. And I've had such a great response from the audience that I figured, hey, let's give this a try. So thank you very Absolutely. much. Frederick and I are both speaking at the upcoming iPhone photography conference put on by your friends at Kelby One. And we have a giveaway. Frederick, tell everybody what we got. You're the one that that did the scoop. Uh, so you did your Jedi mind trick on uh, Scott Kelby and team over there and got them to get up off of a uh, what a license key to Kelby one or to the conference or no, which, which conference. one was it? It's a free ticket to the, to conference. the conference. Got um, it. Yeah. Cur currently worth the early bird special would be 149. Uh, late bird special is 250. So this is a great wow. deal. Two days of learning, two days of right. uh, from from great instructors, including Frederick, Rick Salmon, Eric Kuna, uh, Lisa Carney, Terry White, um, Serge Ramelli. I mean, some of the really greats, and we'll all be speaking. I'm actually speaking about video, about how to shoot professional video, something that I do all the time, as well as introduction to the iPhone. I'm on the first on the pre-con day talking yeah, about cool. introduction to the iPhone photography. Frederick, tell everybody what you'll be talking about. I'm doing a session on iPhone special effects photography. So just show, basically, I'll be going through some of the tools that you can use on the iPhone to do some really ridiculous stuff in video and still photography. Um, so basically the tools and then the second half of it will be the technique. So I'll be demonstrating how to use each one of these pieces of software to do some you know, kind of magical stuff that you may or may not have seen before. So it should be fun. We'll be getting into that. Uh, one of our first questions is a really easy one. He wants to know, where's the conference? Where's the conference? Right here, right here, right online. It's a virtual conference. And to answer another question that has come in, which was, well, I'm kind of busy that day. I may not be able to make all the sessions. Archived for a year. Archived yeah. for a year. Yeah, which and is cool, which is really yeah. good. So uh, I think I have a little slide on this. Uh, oh, I'm supposed to know the Stream Deck so well. Is this it? There it is. The there iPhone it is. Photography Conference. Yes, there it is. Uh, Very good. So uh, if uh, you can sign up at kelby1.com. I'm sorry, kelby1live.com. Or mm -hmm. let's tell, tell everybody about the giveaway. Uh, one lucky viewer today will win a free admission, again, worth $150 a day, worth $250 in, in a few weeks. All they got to do, all they got to do, leave a comment here, which is great. Uh, the comments are coming in, so this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Smash the like button, subscribe to this channel, and, and submit a photo. Where do they submit it, Frederick? That to a brand new shiny Flickr uh, group that you set up yesterday, right? So, yeah, that should be cool. And just, you know, I know we're going to get to introduction. So the reason why Jefferson chose Flickr to host this on is because my my firm, This Week in Photo, my podcast, was acquired by Smug Mug. So, and of course, Smug Mug a couple of years ago acquired Flickr. So now they acquired me. So now we're the trifecta of photography brands and going to eat our own dog food and use Flickr for the submissions, which is perfect, as you'll see when you dive in there. So it should be fun. Uh, so this is what our page looks like with one photo because we're waiting for your photos. 
uh, all the um, the URL is in the description uh, right right below us. All you have to do is look check it out. It's a Flickr group, free. Don't have to do much. Um, you, all, all you have to do is submit a photo, and we're going to spend the next week looking at the photos, whether you're watching yeah. on YouTube or whether you're listening to the podcast, the description will always be there. And just submit a photo, and we will select the winner, as in the best photo. What do you think we're looking for? Any ideas? Yeah, yeah. well, no. We're looking for good photography, right? So just the fundamentals. Just pay attention to you know, all the things, which is composition, lighting, subject, story, you know, if you want to, on This Week in Photo, we do a lot of uh, photo critiques. And some of the critique topics have been on things like reflections, or a dominant color, or depth of field, or, you know, on and on and on. So when we do these critiques, one of the main things that sticks out, I'll tell you a secret, one of the main things that sticks out to me as a person reviewing the photos and critiquing it is the best ones always seem to have a some sort of central story like something in there where you know not a not a whole hero's journey narrative or anything but you know hey here's a picture of a house in a field and one light is on in the house so making your your brain wonder why is that light on and where's the electricity coming from you know something like that you know or or with the reflection instead of just taking a picture of a mirror and submitting it and saying hey that's a reflection it would be something more like hey here's a reflection of a building in a puddle that i inverted to make you kind of think why am i seeing this building looking all distorted you know so Things like that that make a photo more interesting is is what we're looking for, not just a snapshot and submit, right, Jefferson? And, and obviously, an iPhone photo would be a good thing to have, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Why not, right? So the the iPhone, it's so interesting because I used to lead these photo walks for Kelby. You remember Kelby does the the worldwide photo walk thing, and I used to lead the one for San Jose. I'm in the Bay Area, the San, the, uh, San Francisco Bay Area. So I did. I led the one for San Jose, and I remember when you show up there, and the, like the first one I did, there were like, I don't know, they had to be like 50 people, maybe 60 people, a crowd, right, of people with photographers in real life, which is huge. And you know, I would set the tone. I'd stand up and set the tone. This is what we're going to go shoot. And this is the circuit we're going to make. And we're going to meet back here and then go over there and have a drink or eat or whatever. And that was the photo walk. But I remember during that beginning um, introductory part, there was always like, like all these different kinds of cameras. Some people were loaded, loaded for war with all their full metal jacket of you know, of gear and other people had a little point and shoot that they had and some were shooting with their phones and on and on and on. And I was I always thought, wouldn't it be great if we could just all be shooting the same thing? That way you could just concentrate on the fundamentals of photography versus, hey, they got a bigger camera than mine. That's why they were able to get that shot or my camera sucks or, you know, all the things. When you're all like, what was it? The Incredibles. If you guys remember the movie Incredibles, the, um, the main villain, I forget what his name was, the guy with the hair. Um, the main villain was his goal in the movie was to give everyone superpowers. He built this machine to give everyone superpowers because, as he said in the movie, when everyone has superpowers, no one has superpowers, right? So in the how that translates to photography is everyone is shooting with this super powered like super computer thing then no one has an advantage and we can focus on the art versus the tech and and that's what we're going to do and it's one reason that i shoot all the episodes of photo walks on a smartphone because uh you don't have to get anything special if i could do it you could do it and i don't have yeah. any ex you know maybe i have a cage maybe I have a few little yeah. accessories but aside from that um i'm going to talk about some iphone news and frederick and i are going to uh, go, go into that and then we're going to talk about some of the courses we're doing at the conference but first there's a question and hold in your questions because we'll answer a bunch of them later but frederick mm -hmm. is the master of ecamm we are, rec we are using Ecamm software right now, and one of the comments was that my voice is lower than Frederick's, and I would like to raise yeah. that. There is something in the menu, Frederick, for me to raise my me my voice. Yeah, there's what a little there's a little palette. Uh, I forget what, just go in the window palette and find sound, right? There's a little, but a little sound palette will pop up with my name and my levels got and it, your name it, and your levels. It. Thank you. Does that better, it. folks? Yeah. Now I'm talking, how is that, uh, everybody? Let us know. 
Uh, it's louder. On, yeah. uh, it's louder? Okay. Mm-hmm. So, um, again, uh, we're going to take your questions in about 20 minutes. I'm going to give you one, though, that Roy wants to know is about submitting the photo on Flickr. He goes, what if I'm not on Flickr? I don't think you have to be a member to submit a photo. Do you, uh, no. Frederick? No, no. No, you, I don't believe you do. It depends on how you set up the group, because within the Flickr group, you can, you know, specify limitations and permissions and, you know, uh, the the security status of the photos, all that stuff. You as the admin can do that. So just double check to make sure that they can upload anonymously. Okay. I think, I think they and can. If you can't, that. Flickr's free. So, you know. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, I know. It's free for a limited amount. Of, I think it's a thousand photos, right? Or mm-hmm. something like that? Yeah. 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 So, and it's really cool. It's really easy. And I think people will really like it. And things look beautiful there. Let's talk about some iPhone news, uh, iPhone Yay. camera news. So um, at this point of the year, we're in February. New iPhone 15 will be out in September. The rumor mill is already out because they have to start designing it and predicting about what it's going to look like. And uh, so there have been a bunch of uh, designs out there that you could take it with a grain of salt. But uh, one of the big things is that there's a bigger bump on those lenses. In fact, I have a picture of it. Uh, oh, let's good. Put it, let's cool. put it. Uh, yeah, you can't see it really well, but it has a bigger bump on the lenses. The rumor is USB-C for charging and that t- that uh, t- periscope lens that periscope lens that will finally give us telephoto. We now have a 3X telephoto, and this will give us a 6X. So, Frederick, yeah. your reaction? Yeah. You know, I want to love it, but I got to tell you, the, I'm a, this, the phone that I have right now is iPhone 14, right? I'm trying to hold it up. Yeah, that one. It's yeah. a 14, and I don't feel like I've scratched the, the, <laughs> the surface of pushing this thing to the limit where I'm like, you know what? I need a better camera. And this one just is not cutting it for me. I need a better camera in order to do this work that I want to do. I feel like this one's great, right? So I will probably end up getting the new one because there's going to be some feature in there that I'm going to talk myself into like, oh, it does this or the image stabilization is better or whatever. I'm going to talk myself into it. So I'll probably end up getting it. But the truth is I'm betting the iPhone 12 was probably amazing, you know? Well, it is, I had it. It was amazing for photography. So yeah, I don't know if I need more. I don't know if I need a periscoping camera or uh, if I'm longing for telephoto. You uh, do all your work on it, so you not, might, right? Uh, well, first of all, I was gonna get, I'm gonna get it anyway. So I get every <laughs> iPhone, but uh, yeah. I definitely want the periscope lens for those who have the Samsung Galaxy S22 or S23 or S21. You have the periscope lens. You can go from th- uh, from 1x to 6x. Uh, I yeah. don't know. Do you have one of those, Frederick? No, 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 I don't. Um, and I don't, like I said, I this I use this out of the box. Like nine times out of ten, even though I'm doing that Kelby, the, the Kelby uh, conference on on special effects i do those sparingly right and i i like to play around and like just see what's possible and play around with augmented vr and you know all that stuff so i love playing with it but the out of the box camera is what i'm using 90 percent of the time and the out of the box software okay uh i can't wait for the for the 6x uh in other uh other news okay this is fun this is fun Mm -hmm. Uh, headline Pro photographer shoots the Super Bowl with an iPhone. And you say, oh, wow, I can't wait to see these pictures. And the Mm -hmm. first one is pretty good, right? It's a pretty nice shot. I really like this. And then the second one is the photographer standing on the sidelines. And it turns out that of the 15 photos that were shown on this website, si.com, which is either Sports Illustrated or it's not, I'm not sure. It didn't look like Sports Illustrated, but it sort of sounds like it. The guy never shot the game. He didn't shoot any players. He shot stuff from the yeah. side, which is fine. It's They're all great. It's mm-hmm. wonderful. Yeah. But he didn't shoot the Super Bowl. He shot the Super Bowl Thank scene. Thank you. The right? high, that that's clickbaity, misleading title there, right? I was expecting to see, you know, a player in midair grabbing for the football. You could see the retinas of his eyes. You're not going to get that, right? So at least not today. But you're you, we, we can't do that. So when you say someone shot the the Super Bowl, a sport, a you know, a a sporting event of some note, I hear right. 
Houston, <laughs> then you expect to see Super Bowl photos, you know, sideline photos. That would have been a different headline. You know, a photographer shoots great candidates on the sidelines of the Super Bowl. You know, then you're like, OK, yeah, I could do that. I get that. But, you know, you draw me in and it's that bait and switch by telling me that you shot the Super Bowl with your phone. And you actually, you know, shot emotions on the sides. Yeah. What I always like to say is that you can do 80% of what pro photographers need to do on their big cameras on the, on the iPhone or the Galaxy. And you could do everything but sports. You could do everything but sports, school plays, yeah. ballets, um, anything in low light that has lots of action is very right. problematic. Um, you know, you yeah, you could shoot you, you could shoot the Super Bowl had he been at the right place. He's not going to be from far away looking down. If he's right in front of some, uh, 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 like at the at the end end of the goal when he makes the the uh, the touchdown, if he was like right there, well, yeah, he could have gotten a great shot, but he's not going to be there. And you're yeah. not going to be there either. But maybe yeah. maybe with the, that 6X the, lens, huh? Maybe. I mean, I think the, the other side of that coin, you know, the, the glasses have full side of that is like, yeah, I shoot, here's a perfect example. Uh, a while ago, a couple of, several years ago, uh, before I switched back to Nikon, I shoot Nikon now. Um, uh, but I shoot Nikon and Panasonic. Like I'm on a Panasonic Lumix uh, box camera for video right now. But I was shooting Micro Four Thirds primarily as my, my primary camera. And I took that thing with the proper lens, all the things, to my daughter's gymnastics meet. It was one of her first gymnastics meets. And I, you know, I'm loaded for bear. I'm the dad with all the stuff, right? So I go out there and I'm shooting. This was an indoor meet, by the way. So low light and changing lighting conditions. Parents were uncomfortably far away from the action for, you know, <laughs> for sound reasons. Um, but, you know, I'm shooting and I, you know, I was just upset because I'm not I'm not able the physics weren't working the tr exposure triangle let's say just wasn't working for what I needed to capture little tin, you know eight-year-old girl bouncing around on the floor doing high-speed gymnastics you want to freeze that you want to be close and you know do the medium and wide shots as well so I the next the next time I went back I brought my I left the micro four thirds camera at home and brought this guy the iPhone and similar issues, you know, nothing was different, low light, all that stuff. I was able to zoom in to a, you know, a reasonable degree that it wasn't horrible, you know, and did a lot of shots. But where it was different was 99% of the shots were exposed correctly and froze the action as I wanted it frozen. And I have to attribute that to the computational photography superpowers in the iPhone. So where that exposure triangle, you know, basically hit the end of the road, you know, go no further than this point without introducing golf ball size grain, the computer took over and computational photography took over and it did all the math and it said, oh, he's probably at a gymnastics meet. So he's probably going to shoot fast. He's going to want this. Let me brighten up the background a little bit. Let me do all the things with the computer to the raw materials that the optics were giving it before it even presented me with an image that looked a hundred times better than the micro four thirds image. So, you know, it's, it's right tool for the right job, but you know, I think that's where, where the current crop of cameras are being left behind from phones even is that computational photography world. And I was thinking, man, wouldn't it be great if I had Apple tech, inside of my interchangeable lens camera so that I'd have optics and the computational photography to fill in the blanks, I would have superpowers at that point. So, you know. Now, speaking of uh, Apple optics, uh, check it out. The first iPhone was just sold this week in an auction for guess how much, audience? Guess how much, Frederick? Do we know how much uh, this woman was able to sell the phone for? Uh, yeah, it was something in the five figure, six figure, no, five figures, right? 60,000, something like that. $68,000. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I wish I, you know, I had that phone. Where'd it go? <laughs> I, have I have that no phone. Idea. I have you that have phone it. in the, in the drawer right behind me, that phone, but that one, that I have all the phones. <laughs> um, <laughs> Frederick, one, I'll give you. That I'll one was you, sealed in a box, right? I'll give you 40 grand. Will you, you, you take that? What do you think? No, nah, I'm gonna sit on it. I like uh, it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it still works too. It's great. I yeah, have the but, first iPod also. 
Uh, yeah, that was pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they've come a long way. I, I, I felt the first one was a little buggy. It started getting good around the iPhone 4, I think, is when it uh, started taking over the world. And yeah. uh, I, you know, it's really funny, though. I, you know, I, I found a picture of, uh, of my old iPhone 8 doing a time lapse in San Francisco. And uh, I have a great time lapse that I did on the iPhone 8. And in fact, b behind me is uh, there's a picture on the wall. I'll go, go full. Uh, that picture back there was on the uh, iPhone 8 as well. So, you know, wow. it, yeah. they, they've mm -hmm. come a long way, but they've been really great. Uh, and um, so that is the news section. Uh, folks, I want you to get your questions ready. We'll s sort of uh, jump into there in 10 minutes. Um, right now, I think Frederick and I are going to talk about the different classes that we're doing at the iPhone Photography uh, Conference. Again, Kelby One Live. One lucky viewer gets a free admission. It's, uh, worth $150 a day, worth $250. All you have to do is submit a question. I'm sorry, submit a photo to our Flickr group. And uh, we're gonna we'll let you know on next week's show uh, who the winner is. So Absolutely. submit your photos whether you're watching live on YouTube or whether you're listening to the podcast. Please submit the uh, the URL will be in both places. Now, Frederick, special Ooh. effects on the iPhone. Tell everybody, give them a teaser for what you're going to be talking about. Well, there's there's a, you know I'm not going to give any of it away, um, largely because I'm still outlining it. It hasn't even been recorded, yet. <laughs> but it's going to be interesting. So the um, the whole thing, the thrust of this presentation is to show that the iPhone and Jefferson, you preach this, right? The iPhone shooting with the iPhone shouldn't any longer have to be excusatory is, I guess, is the word. Like, for example, you shouldn't have to say, yeah, this is great, but I shot it on my iPhone, right? We're getting past that point or with video, like, hey, look at the shot I got. And, you know, I know I did it on the iPhone, but look at it. It's kind of, you know. It's where I think we're past that point by years of having to make excuses about the quality that you're getting out of the iPhone or saying that I can't tell these stories that I have inside me because I don't have a proper camera. Oh, let me get on Facebook real quick. Right. So I think I think those days are over. So the presentation is making that leap towards the i the power of the iphone is a foregone conclusion or to put it a, a, a different way an acceptable level the acceptable level of quality which used to be broadcast quality or photo quality whatever that is way in the rear view now we're way beyond that with the things that we can do with traditional photography and also the things that we can do with untraditional or what I like to call time travel photography. So that's the kind of stuff that we're gonna dive into in the presentation is more of the time travel aspects, which and I, I define time travel as taking multiple slices of time and either compressing them or spreading them out longer for great effects so that you can now see things in the photos that you couldn't perceive with your ordinary naked eye, whether that's you know like long exposures, or composites or uh, multiplicity type stuff or on and on and on. So all these different things we're gonna talk about as well as some Hollywood style effects where you know from some movies you may have seen on television, I wonder how they did that thing. We're gonna do that thing live and it's gonna look like it looked on Netflix. So it, okay. it should be fun, I'm looking forward to it. Give me one effect, one effect that we can look forward to. Levitation is one of them. So you're gonna levitate, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, okay. I'll show. So that's a really simple effect. And most people know how to do that in Photoshop really easily. But there's some things inside your phone now, and even Lightroom now that make that it make it that make it much easier to do this effect, like really quickly and a much better result than if you were even in, you know, using Photoshop. So yeah, really interesting. So that's one of them levitation. Okay, I think I've told you the story, Frederick, about in my when I was wearing my USA Today hat and I did an interview with David Copperfield, the great magician, a few years ago. Yeah. And I said, "Look, mm -hmm. can you do me a favor for the picture for the article? I'll close my eyes, I'll turn my back, but can you can you levitate an iPhone for me, just just for the picture?" And he goes, "Well." Does it have to be an iPhone? Could it be an iPad? Sure, sure. Go levitate the iPad. He says, could I do it on my own time and get back? Get, I'll send you the picture. Fine, yeah, go ahead, go do it. And it was a great shot. That would so be cool. I can't, I can't awesome. wait. Yeah. I can't wait to watch your levitation. 
Um, I will actually be in Japan uh, while the conference is going on because I'll be doing my thing from there, but I'll be watching you because I think you're on right after I am on, yeah, on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. Right. And yeah, I'll be I mean, yeah, I'll, I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited about the whole thing. And I'm especially excited about having my name mentioned amongst all of you, you know, heavy hitters, you know, that are in that lineup of speakers. I'm like, it's like, you know, Mickey Mantle and all these people and you get down to and there's Frederick Van Johnson in there, you know, so. Yeah, yeah so I, I, feel I, I feel the pressure to do exceedingly well. I got to over deliver on this one. Well, I feel the same way about being with you and and Serge and Rick, Rick Salmon, <laughs> right? and uh, yeah, I mean th these guys are great and and, yeah. and gals, Lisa Carney uh, and mm -hmm. um, Gilmar Hilmar. I think you pronounce it yeah. Hilmar Smith. Hilmar yeah. Hilmar she's, Smith. She's yes. she's wonderful too. I mean Lisa Carney. You, go look at her. She was on the podcast and she does movie posters. Um, she did, uh, there's a new series on Showtime with Brian Cranston. I don't remember the name of it. Just check out the movie poster because she did it and Ooh. her work is out of this world. And she's going to talk about how she does. Uh, she, basically, that was a bright shot and she turned it into nighttime. So I will be talking about introductory to the iPhone photography, walking everybody through the menu and all the modes and all the options because I find that most people are overwhelmed. They get the phone, they click the white button, they take a picture, and that's it. They're not really aware of all the really cool things that are on it, um, time lapse and different yeah. modes of slow mo and um, you know how to do how to do burst mode and there's just there's yeah. so many wonderful things that are there and that's one thing that I'm doing I'm sort of kicking the conference off with that and then on the on the second day of the conference I'm talking about how to shoot professional video now I have a very a fun story. I wish I had the video here. But I went to Oldsmar, Florida to uh, shoot some stuff with our friends at Kelby One. And mm -hmm. I think you'll be going soon as well. And Sunday, I'm on a plane, yeah. provided the, you know, it's Southwest. So I don't know. But yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, Sunday. <laughs> so we did back to back. We shot on the, uh, the R6 Canon camera and on the iPhone 14 uh, back to back video. And the, yeah. I swear that the iPhone looks better. Yeah. I, it really looks better. And people are going to be knocked out when they see this clip. For photos, I won't go as far. I think the photos are really good. I think generally the photos on a bigger camera can be a lot better. But, um, you know, you, you've all heard my story about I went to Paris with this. That's it. You know, I left all the gear at home. I wasn't dragging any lenses. I didn't have anything around my neck. I would leave in the morning with two phones in my pocket and return in the evening with two phones in my pocket. And um, my body felt great and I didn't have to worry about theft. So, yeah. Yeah. Hey, you, you remember as an aside to that, you remember uh, back in the day, Apple released uh, a camera called the Quick Take. I wonder if anybody if you sound off in the in the Sounds chat familiar. if you've heard of the quick yeah. the Apple Quick Take. It looked like um, a set of gray binoculars with the multicolored Apple logo on it. And so my point with that is Apple is no stranger to building digital cameras. You know they have the 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 uh, intelligence or the history to be able to do that. So I'm wondering, like, what would that do? to your kind of mindset if they if apple said you know what you know what we took all of our learnings about computational photography and imaging and photography and we built something brand new that we think you're gonna love it's the new eye camera that lets you use our brand of interchangeable lenses we partnered with Hasselblad to make this range of lenses for this thing. It runs iOS, which means you can run all your favorite iPhone photography apps on it, and it's a proper full frame sensor on the back of it. Would you great. love that, or would or would you stay iPhone? Uh, great, uh, as long as the lenses are this big, because I, I don't think they would be very large, right? <laughs> no, they um, wouldn't. It'd be like I, Micro Four Thirds, kind of. I am more than willing to give it a try. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Bob Bowden says the name of that show is called Your Honor. That's on Showtime. Oh, uh, oh, with the judge and the, the kid. kid. And yeah. The, the, yeah, the kid that did the hit and run. I think that was it. Yeah. It's an incredible yeah. show. Now, um, I promised when I was on the Mark Thompson show today to give some tips. Well, actually, I give them to Mark, but I'll give them to you guys as well. Some tips on photographing a baby. Okay, uh, a friend of mine just had a grandkid and asked me for some tips on how to get good baby shots, which 
as any photographer knows, there's nothing harder. There is yeah. nothing more challenging. Uh, a baby is either sleeping or probably crying. Uh, kittens, so, kittens are hard too, Jefferson. Just, oh, they are? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Impossible. <laughs> oh, but they're so cute, uh, as are the babies. So uh, I'd like to introduce everybody to your, your, your volume button. At the t right up here is burst mode. See it right there. Keep your finger down yep. on burst mode and just let her rip. I did a baby shoot about a year or two ago. A year or two ago, baby saw me walking up with my big black camera and just started howling, screaming, yelling. It was awful. And I went on. I didn't shoot on the iPhone. I shot on my Sony. Uh, but I took fifteen hundred pictures of this baby, and out of that fifteen, I got one where she wasn't screaming. So wow. it's it's wow. quite a challenge. You can shoot burst mode and you can get 20 30 40 shots at a clip on the iphone which is pretty great it is do you know if when, when you're shooting in burst mode if you're set to be shooting raw does raw record at that speed as well or just jpegs i don't think raw will go as fast but you can certainly yeah. burst your raw and cool. uh yep yeah. so you know, insurance, insurance. And, it, you know, I think there's one urban myth that um, to be a good photographer, you just do insurance and you take a thousand photos and hope that you get one that's good. It's generally not not really the best policy. You, you basically want to use time honored techniques of composition and lighting and things like that. But um, in the case of a screaming baby, you want to take a lot of pictures. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Yeah. Or anything that's fast moving. Um, that you're hoping to get that split second glance at the camera with the smile and then it's gone a second later. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, or family shots, a big group family shots take, you know, go on burst mode for that one. There's always somebody with the eye closed and Frederick and I know how to open the eyes up in Photoshop. I don't know that everybody else out there does. Right. Yeah. 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 But again, who knows soon the iPhone may say, Hey, this is the best shot. Let me, would you like me to open the eyes? Click the eyes are open. <laughs> Now, so. um, I want everybody to start uh, getting their questions together. We've got a few, and we'll, we'll get them to them in about seven minutes. But first, Frederick, for folks who don't know, This Week mm -hmm. in Photo, great podcast. It is over 10 years old, I think, uh, mm -hmm. right? You've been doing it for a while. Um, yeah. Tell everybody about the show. Oh, thanks. Yeah, so This Week in, this week in Photo at thisweekinphoto.com. Um, is it started as a podcast and then grew into kind of a media property in a lot of levels where it's the podcast, it is the, you know, our email list, it is a YouTube channel, all the socials and all the things. The main, the, the, the main nucleus of the show is the, the discussions I have with other photographers, weekly discussions with folks from all over the industry, some beginning folks, some folks doing crypto, some, you know, or NFTs, some folks that are interested in real estate photography, street photography, whatever. So I have these conversations with them and I, I approach the conversations on the show um, much like I would just be hanging out with Jefferson, you know, and having a conversation about photography, very peer to peer based, not interviewer, interviewee based. It's like two people having a beer and talking about this thing that they love. So, and I've, I've gotten better at having that tone of conversation over the years, still everything, like everything, still a work in progress um, and continually improving, but it's really fun to have these chats. And now that the audience is at a, you know, relatively large on the show, I'm able to att attract and tempt larger brands to come on or more, you know, impactful people to us, uh, photographers in the industry. I can bring them on, for example, in an episode that should be going live actually today on the show, um, I was able to interview Terry Morgan, who's a co-founder of a company called LumaTouch, and they make a piece of software for iPhone and iPad, and now Android, called um, LumaFusion, which is basically Final Cut Pro or Premiere or, or DaVinci Resolve on the phone or on the iPad. It's that powerful. So they built this thing and the crux, and I've interviewed her before. If you've seen the show, you know I interviewed her several months ago about their new multicam feature, which is a pro level feature that lets you edit up to like 12 4K video streams simultaneously on your mobile device, which is just 
magic, right? So they, when I first interviewed her about it, it was like a year late or something, and people were still waiting on this feature. Where's the feature? Where's the feature? You pre-announced it, and now they're nothing. Um, in that time, the window of time since I interviewed her the first time, and this time, the the episode that will release today or tomorrow, she or or Da Vinci Resolve, one of their competitors, they make. Uh, Black Magic, or is it Black Magic? Yeah, they make this piece of software called DaVinci Resolve, which is a video editing suite, and they've ported that over to mobile. It's on the iPad. It's not on the phone, but it is on iPad, and it looks great. It's almost feature for feature for for the editing side of the house, the video editing side of the house. It's the same UI as on the desktop, right? So we had that conversation and discussed the competitive atmosphere. And that's just one of the kind of tones of conversations that I like to have on This Week in Photo, where it's it's not just, hey, what does this lens do? Or, hey, this new sensor, or hey, this new tripod or camera bag. More of the, like, let's, let's talk, like we've been doing this for a while and we're having real conversations with real people about real things that affect photographers and that photographers are interested in. Now, so that's it, This Week in Photo. How often yeah. do the new, when do the new episodes drop? Um, every Thursday or Friday. So one will either go live today or tomorrow morning. And the, but then also in the community, we, we do live photo critiques in there for members because there is a live, there's a private community involved with this week in photo as well. So you can sign in, sign up for the community. And then we, we do a live review or critique of member photos every Monday at noon. And then every Friday we do a, what I call a member mixer where we have all of our members jump into basically jump into a free for all zoom room. And I loosely heard the sheep in there, but we have a, you know, just kind of a friend to friend conversation about, Hey, this happened this week, or, Hey, I'm having a problem with this, or, you know, how do I deal with this client or whatever? We just, you know, we kind of group think stuff or just hang out and talk about current events. So yeah, it's pretty fun. And all of that encompasses the This Week in Photo property, which, as I mentioned in the beginning, is now part of Smug Mug. So now there's Smug Mug, Flickr, and then this, this I like to call it the tip of the spear, Smug, or, uh, This Week in Photo, because I'm the one that gets to ask the hard questions and do all the fun interviews and all that stuff. Um, and then, uh, you know, of course, I'm joking about that because also Alistair Jolly is part of Smug Mug, which many Who's, of you he's know. He's here know. today. He's here today. Oh, he's in the chat. He, yeah. So Alistair, in- Alistair, you know, amongst, a, as I learn almost daily, a gazillion hats that that guy wears at the company um, and is very humble about it. He uh, also does, you know, from time to time live streams and webinars and things like that for, for the company. So I'm looking forward to working with him more on that stuff. So that's this week in photo. That's what I do. Okay. Alistair's in Scotland right now. And, and I I think Frederick and I both want to go there and visit him and do a photo walk, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, If, yeah, a photo walk in a castle, I want to have a beer in a castle. That's I guess I got to check that off my list. Beer in a castle. Well, (laughs) as somebody who's been to Scotland, they have a lot of them. They have a lot of castles. Okay. In a giant mug, you know, and then, you know, all that. Questions are pouring in uh, from John, John Cosgrove. Can you shed light on efficient workflow when you have taken iPhone shots in burst mode, both from selection and storage management? Yes, they, Apple does the old automatic thing where they select one of your 50 photos and they do the selection and they're not always right. Um, right. So if you click the edit button and you can go to select, you can choose, this is in the in the photos app, you can choose w- to take them all or you can choose the selection yourself. That's what I have found. What have you found, Frederick? Yeah, I haven't, I, I'll have to take your word for it. I haven't done a whole lot of burst shooting. So <laughs> no, you need I'm to a, photograph some babies. You need to photograph I, some babies. Uh, no, that those days are gone. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> All my babies are grown mostly. So. Okay. It, that, it, it, it is the most challenging thing for any photographer. Uh, Frederick would say kittens is challenging, but I don't think anything comes close to the babies. Uh, my okay. favorite, I do a lot of family shoots here in Manhattan Beach, California, where I live. So I meet them at the beach, um, even when they're older. And you've got a family of four and they're standing there at the beach. And then all of a sudden the kids walk away. They said, no, the shoot's not over. And they just, I'm bored. We're walking away. Uh, okay. Teresa. 
Is anyone else having problems after editing with Lightroom, getting the photo back to their iPhone photo albums? Initially had no problems, but now only blank photo transfer. My answer is no, I've had no problems. How about you? Neither. And I use Lightroom Mobile every day. It's my go-to favorite app uh, uh, on, on the phone for photo editing. I have not had any issues. And uh, I just airdrop the edited photo to my computer is generally what I do. Mm-hmm. Same here. Yep. Okay. Uh, Alistair, Alistair says he's waxing and he's ready. He's ready. Okay. He says he's waving, ready. waving. Oh, he's, he's waving. Not, but he's hopefully ready. he's not waxing on camera. <laughs> okay. He's ready for the photo walk. So the next time you turn around, it could be Photo Walks TV from Scotland. We'll go to Edinburgh. We'll go to Glasgow. We'll go to the Highlands. We're going to go all over the place. Um, yeah. Flo, thank you, Flo. She says, good show. Jerry Rice says, when I airdrop photos from my iPhone to the downloads folder on my Mac, sometimes the original date timestamp and other times I get the transfer date. Me too. How can I always get the original time date? That yeah. is something that we're going to have to look into because I don't know. And I sure would love to fix that because, uh, it, you know, I go through it all the time because I live on AirDrop. Mm-hmm. It, AirDrop, yeah. if you don't know, is this thing, unbelievable thing that's built into the iPhone. You click a button and it bloop, just goes in your computer. Or if you're out in the field, it can just go into someone else's iPhone, which could be problematic uh, if you don't know which iPhone to send it to. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that sounds like a bug. To be honest with you, that that's not, especially in, if it's intermittent, you know, that it, and you can't predict when it's going to happen. That's 100 percent a software bug that Apple will need to fix. Hopefully someone has logged that and, you know, maybe they'll release a fix for that eventually. But, yeah, that I don't think you're doing anything wrong. That sounds 100 percent like software error. OK, um, Russ says you guys have. Well, let, let's uh, put that up. You guys have convinced me to upgrade my iPhone. Which is better for photography, iPhone or Galaxy? That's like the question I used to get, which was, what kind of camera should I buy? Yeah. I, I've, I've heard this question a few times. How do you answer it, uh, Frederick? Uh, uh, you know, I I answer these the optics and the software in these cameras is probably. Yeah, I'll say there's whatever you buy, there's going to be a lot of headroom between, you know, where you are when you buy it and you hitting the ceiling of, oh, if only it could do this. So with iPhone or the Galaxy, I I don't think you can go wrong. I think it's it's more of in terms of the camera now in terms of ecosystems and airdrop type features and all these other things that, you know, us that are marinating in the Apple ecosystem get to play with. Um, that's a different different question entirely. That's more of a philosophical question, or even what is your what are your friends and family on, right? You know, because you're messaging. Do you want to be the per- person with the blue bubbles on, you know, Apple messages or or the the green bubbles rather? So you know, you gotta you gotta figure out kind of like with cameras. When people ask me that question about which camera should I buy, the response is always how much money you got, what are you shooting. And who do you know that also has a camera that you could swap and borrow lenses from to just to make sure you like this particular kind of camera? And then after all that, then I suggest renting just like just so that you understand how the operating system of a particular brand works. And you may not like it. Like some people can't stand the Sony operating system, but love the Panasonic Lumix system or love the Nikon system, but can't stand Leica, whatever. So. There's a lot more to that question than should you get an iPhone or Galaxy or which camera should I buy? It, it all, you know, the, the cheap cop out is always it depends, but it really does. You know, it okay. really depends now, on what you're going to do. On cameras, there is no bad camera. Sony, Canon, Nikon, Olympus, Fuji, whatever you get right. is an amazing camera that is uh, hands down so much in uh, Leica, so much better than anything you would have had years ago. You can't yep. go wrong. The question is, how much do you want to spend on if yeah. you have an iPhone versus a Galaxy versus a Pixel? You can't go wrong. They're amazing cameras. Now it comes down to preferences. I find 
in my limited experience with the galaxy, I mean, it's not that limited, but I've tried a bunch, that there's a bunch of gimmicks in there that degrade the quality of the photo mm. and or they add they boost the colors in a way that I don't like them to do. I've heard from other mm. people that say that the S22, the Galaxy S22 last year, was the best camera for smartphone photography ever. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I love my iPhone. I love my iPhone. Yeah. I love the camera. I love the operating system. I love the airdrop. I love the ease of use. So I'm an iPhone guy. Yeah. And you could also look at it from a, a, a more pragmatic perspective where you could say, you know, Apple is a truly, I don't know what their market cap is. Let's just say trillions, right? So Apple yeah. is, has a market cap in the trillions and they built that largely on the back of iPhones and the leading feature in iPhones is always the camera, right? <laughs> so trillion dollar bottomless pit of money and talent and desire and and uh, brand awareness pumping all their money into the camera on. So if you're buying an iPhone for the camera, you can get, you can best bet a, a ton of R&D went into and is continuing to be poured into just the camera feature on iPhone. Whereas, you know, at other companies, I'm not sure that they have that level of torque, let's say, <laughs> when it comes to imaging and advancing the art of imaging. So, okay. yeah. So put that in your equation as you make your decision. Okay. We've got some more questions. We've got two, actually you got several from Roy, but I'm going to first an easy one, which is in the Apple app store, do you have to subscribe to Lightroom to download the app? No. Lightroom mobile is free uh, for iOS and for Android. Um, what they will do is try to upsell you, but your free basic app is incredible and is more full featured than the Apple Photos app. Now, the other question from Roy, uh, this is in my wheelhouse. I'm interested in how to do a time-lapse photo, which is a video. I'm assuming that the clouds have to be moving. Well, it's really funny. You know, one of the things I'm, I guess I'm known for is I do a lot of time-lapse. I do. And um, I realized yesterday I've never really done a video on how to do a great time lapse. It's always in various little pieces here and there. So I'm going to do one this week, give you all the secrets cool. to my time lapsing. But here it is very simple. Tripod, smartphone adapter, set up your shot, press record, stand there for an hour. That's what you do. Yeah. Well, and put it on time lapse and then yes, press go. Yeah, put it on yeah. time lapse. And yeah. you need movement, 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 movement. So clouds, are fantastic. They're incredible. I did one in Santa Barbara of the county courthouse where I got there at 5.30 in the morning and I wanted to watch night turn to day. There were no, I didn't really get clouds, but what I got was just seeing the movement of the light was incredible. Uh, you know, fast cars are always fun. I do the ocean a lot, though I think the ocean gets a little herky-jerky. Uh, mm -hmm. And then a lot of people like to do hyperlapse, which is them running down the street. But you have to run for a long time to get anything of interest. Frederick, do you do a lot of time lapses? I, that's one thing that, that I think a lot of people, they get the iPhone. That's probably one of the reasons why they get it, because of, you know, folks like, you know, Casey Neistat's YouTube channel, he always, or in a lot of his videos, he starts with a time lapse at the beginning. And the, I think, yeah, you hit it right on the head, Jefferson. I don't know what else to add to that. But yeah, the, the whole idea of time lapse is, like I said earlier, in that whole time travel thing, is you're compressing time. Something that would have happened over an hour or multiple hours, you're compressing down into minutes, which we as humans can't perceive that. So it looks interesting instantly as we see time unfold or flowers growing or clouds passing by or ships un going underneath the Golden Gate Bridge or something like that. It, it instantly looks interesting. But yeah, the your, your point of not or having static clouds in the shot and Jefferson's point of yes, you can whatever you shoot in time lapse has to have some sort of dominant motion or some sort of obvious motion in there, whether, you know, and not necessarily things like trees blowing, because it's just going to look like, you know, trees moving fast, but things like a crowded scene and showing the people kind of moving around in there like ants, you know, or like I mentioned, the boats going under a bridge or stuff like that, where if you look at it, it looks boring <laughs> or, or relatively benign, um, just kind of looking at it in the real, but then if you compress the time down, you know, it, it starts looking interesting. So it's also, it's very, it's interesting because it's a, 
it, you need to start looking at different scenes differently now. If you're looking at them specifically for time lapse, now when you're looking at an intersection of traffic, you know, maybe that would look good in time lapse. You know, let's try that out. Cool thing is you could experiment it experiment with that all day. It's you free. can set your camera up in the living room tonight and have your family running around, you know, just to get a feel for how the speed works and composition and what's interesting, what's not interesting. Yeah, what you can't do is handhold uh, because you need to basically let the camera roll for a, a half hour to an hour. The best yeah. best you could hope for is a minute of of handheld you just can't it just can't be done so you're going to yeah. have to put it on a tripod and have something to do <laughs> um now yeah. now one interesting time lapse uh, it's going to be on saturday's episode of photo walks tv which will be uh, in the little danish town of salvang california a very interesting little place uh up up the coast here it's actually in I've been there, but, but yeah. it's a little north of Santa Barbara. So I went out with this great photographer, George Rose. We started shooting at six thirty in the morning. I let it roll till eight o'clock, eight a.m. Uh, of the morning, and beyond the clouds, colors that you would have never seen mm. that you only see in a time lapse because you usually get a morning color show that happens really fast. Same thing happened to me in Hawaii uh, where the sunrise was nice, but the pre-show was even better. So it's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. We have a question from Arthur. In your editing workflow, do you prefer to start with photos or begin with Lightroom? I'll let you go first, Frederick, and then I'll answer. Yeah, uh, my workflow is going to be different than Jefferson's. My my photos, let's, let's say my photography or my, you know, what I shoot with my big cameras, I have it separated in my mind as I want my Apple stuff to be an Apple. So I want my iPhone photos and content I produce there to be organized as Apple th thinks it should be organized. So I use photos for that. Typically, it ends up being family, friends, my parking space at the airport, you know, those sorts of things. And a lot of really fun artistic shots and macro and all that stuff. So it goes in photos because it understands how to sort with the metadata that the that the 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 phone captures with the photo all that stuff is captured so i like to keep that in that ecosystem on the other side of it if i'm doing professional portraits or things like that and i'm shooting them with my my nikon z or z62 then those are going into lightroom and i edit those inside of lightroom and do all my fun stuff in there so you know i i don't think it needs to be a zero-sum game for these tools you know it, it, it just what fits your particular goals and your particular workflow and having the dual systems works great for me. Okay. So I have a two-sided answer on this. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, shoot everything on the iPhone, do my backup, and then everything goes into Lightroom on the computer because I can see on my monitor way better than I can see on a 4.7 inch screen. I need to see it on the computer. That mm -hmm. said, when I'm out in the field, the set, another way of answering this question is I do the first edit in Apple Photos. But then mm. if I want to go to the next level, I'm at Lightroom. Because in Lightroom, by the way, anybody who is a member of Creative Cloud with Adobe, uh, if you get Photoshop, if you get Lightroom, uh, you get the extra features in the Lightroom mobile app. One of them is masking. Uh, the little crazy little button, and you click a button, it says just isolate the sky. So you just isolate the sky and you do your edits on the sky, leaving the yeah. rest of the picture okay. And so that's something that I cannot do in Apple Photos. I can't do it. Um, and it's pretty cool. So I do a little editing on the phone, probably do a lot of editing on the phone, but I do a second edit on my computer because I just need to see the pictures. So yep. that's, Very that's good. my story about that. Um, do we have, oh, Okay, so Bob Bowden is a fan of the uh, the thing that I can't even pronounce. Frederick, do you see what he's saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, let's see. Able what? skewers. Able skivers. I don't know. I can't. Yeah. I don't know. That's a <laughs> yeah. that is a Danish tree. Able skivers. Yeah, uh, Able well skivers. known skivers. in Solvang. In the interest of journalism, my wife and I tried it all. We we ate um, a bear claws and and uh, what else? Uh, uh, Kringles and all these crazy <laughs> little Danish treats. They were good, but just so you know, Jeff is a chocolate guy. I I you know 
uh, send me to Chocolate Town. The best trip I ever had in my life was when I went to Hershey, Pennsylvania. That was wow. exciting. You know, okay. and I checked into the hotel and I gave them my credit card and they handed it back with two chocolate bars. And yeah. and then I went up to the room and there was a big bowl of chocolate bars. It was amazing. And then I went You're like down the to kid. The... You're the kid that, that was in Willy Wonka that got the ticket, right? <laughs> and then I went to the pool and there was chocolate bars, towels and chocolate bars. So it was really great. Um, folks, it's coming up to that time. I want to remind you that Frederick and I will both be speaking at teaching at the iPhone Photography Conference March 28th and 29th. Oh, I have I have a uh, something on the stream deck to show you that picture. Where is it? Uh, is that it? No, that's not it. I've got to learn this thing, right, Frederick? Yeah. There it is. There it is. The iPhone Photography Conference, kelby1live.com. Uh, I'll be speaking about beginning uh, iPhone photography and showing you all the different menus and all that sort of stuff and how to shoot video professionally. Frederick will be talking about creating special effects on your iPhone. A one lucky viewer today will get a free admission to this conference worth $150 today or $250 next week. All you got to do is submit a photo to our Flickr group. The URL is in the description. And for those listening on the podcast, the URL is in that description as well. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. I would just say that, folks, what do you think? Did you enjoy this today? Uh, did you have a good time? Because uh, uh, it's been nice. I've enjoyed this. And if you liked it, I'll come back next Thursday. I'll even come back next Thursday and announce the winner of the contest. I think, I think that should happen. That should happen. Yeah. And uh, if you happen to be in the Bay Area, you might find the two of us out taking photos one day, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Be, you will. Yeah. He's foreshadowing a future announcement. Ladies yeah, and gentlemen. So we haven't so, announced yeah. it yet, but you know, <laughs> we like to hang out in the Bay Area. So yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. S Jones says great quality. And I think on that note, I will, I will say thank you, Frederick, this week in And, uh, I even have, check it out. Look at that twip. Look at that. All yes, right. That's I made it. that That's yesterday. Me. I even made That's one awesome. for myself, I think, somewhere here. There it is. Look Check at that. It out. So you yeah, know who's thanks. the real master who's the real master of ecam and that stream deck is Alistair Jolly, who's I don't know if he's still in the chat, but he that guy could make ecam and stream deck, you know, do a jig. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> well, he's, it's, got the, it's been, he's got the answers. It's been a learning experience. Frederick uh, has instructed me to go by the stream deck, which is can we see it? There it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's which it, yeah. really helped, really helped me uh, do some switching. And uh, I'm, by the way, photographed on the iPhone. That is the iPhone. Uh, and those are my guitars back there. and Or some of the guitars. Some of the guitars. So we have a few. Um, thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, looks like this time slot was good. I was not sure if 2 o'clock was going to work. But uh, enough people are here. So let's try it next week. What do you say? Yeah, absolutely. All right, Frederick, see you in cyberspace. All right, see you And later. everybody, thanks, thanks again everybody. for watching. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. I think we're off now, right? Or no, no we're not. You're